Hey friends! Um, here is a slightly less exhausted version of me making videos. I'm gonna pull up our logo project from yesterday and I will get you that third one, which will end up looking like this, but I'm gonna draw it again from scratch. Okay, so step one to make that third logo in our logo project is to pick up our circle tool, right? Remember that's six. So our keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my first circle. Um, in order to make another circle that's exactly the same, I'm gonna use duplicate, which is control D. So control D will be duplicating whatever thing is selected, whatever has that orange outline, go and get duplicated. Um, I'm gonna slide this over, okay, so that I get that kind of edge overlap, right, which was around the edges of that logo. So I'm gonna start by, let's make sure these two are um, horizontally aligned. Modify, align, and you can do, use control equals um, in order to align things, or you can do this to get your align distribute thing, your align distribute toolbar open. So I wanna align the centers horizontally, okay? So let's see which one that is. No, I don't want them to be lined up vertically. I want them to be lined up horizontally and I want them to be lined up by the center. So what that's gonna do is just double check and make sure that they're exactly um, symmetrical to each other. So we're good to go now. So my next step is gonna be to select both of them as I already have, right? They're both selected. And then I'm gonna use intersect solids or intersect surface sorry, intersect surface, which we used before when we were clipping something out, right? So intersect sur surface is gonna create this center piece, okay? So now I actually don't need my original two circles. I'm just gonna be using this and copying it several times in order to create that grid of four circles that you can see. So I'm gonna use Control C, Control V, Right, so that's another way of duplicating, is just to copy and paste something. Um, my first move is gonna be to make the center of it, and this is gonna use my snapping tools. So I wanna make sure I pick it up when it looks like the crosshairs, so then I can snap together those two pieces. So that gives me that center segment. Now I'm gonna do the horizontal segment. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take pick up both of these, I'm gonna duplicate them, right leave them all connected and both selected pick up my rotate tool which was alt equals so alt equals there's my rotate tool i'm going to click here in the center and then i'm going to click there at the very top edge and it's going to start spinning around right and i want it to be exactly horizontal which i can either wait until that dashed red line shows up then i know it's horizontal or I can hold down the shift key and it's gonna snap to specific uh, degree markers. So I can hold down the shift key and then I know I'm horizontal and once I like where it is, I'm gonna hit my mouse button. So there I am now with a vertical pair and a horizontal pair. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool, my pointer, pick it up, this two pieces that are still selected, pick it up with the little crosshairs and line those up right there in the center. Okay, see how we've got that center cross now. Awesome. All right, now I'm gonna make another copy of this. So I'm gonna use duplicate this time, control D, and I'm gonna align this copy right here at the top. Control D, where'd it go? Oh, it went all the way up here right? I had to zoom out to find it because it went above me because what Vectorworks is doing is it's like, oh, it says you, co you copied that thing and you moved it that far up on the screen. So I'm going to assume next time you duplicate, it wants to be that distance again, farther away. In this case, we actually want it to be below where we just were. So I pick it up again using that crosshairs at the center. So now it's at the bottom of this image. I'm going to grab my center two and control D and just move them down. Not quite what I was going for. 
but I'm going to set them over here on the side and then control D again, pick these up from the center and pop them right on the edge here. Okay. So now that gives me my four outside edges. So now all of those arch piece, arc pieces, sorry, arc pieces are connected, right? So it looks like a circle, but it's actually made up of those four overlapping pieces. Yeah. Okay. So next step, we're going to fill in that center space. Um, and this is kind of a cool tool. It basically takes the geometry on the screen and it creates an object from whatever is inside the lines. So what I'm going to do is grab my four pieces using my selection tool. So I don't need all of them. I just need these four like that. Then I'm going to go up to modify and I'm going to choose combine into surface. Once I click combine into surface, my cursor turns into a paint bucket. Um, so this is just like paint bucket tool in Photoshop where when you click on the paint bucket, it fills everything until it hits an edge. So I'm going to just click on that paint bucket and now it has created the object that fills in in the center. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that again for all four quadrants. Okay. Modify, combine into surface, and click inside. Same thing again. Oops, I don't have that guy. If I hold shift and click on it, I can add it to my selection. Modify, combine into surface, click inside. That one didn't work. What happened? So what that may mean is that it's not a perfectly aligned piece. Let's check it one more time and see what we got. See if it works this time. And if not, okay, so what's going on here, right, is that these pieces are not perfectly aligned to give me that center section. It looks right now like maybe the bottom is a little bit off. Let's zoom in and check that out. Yeah, so that's what I have going on. My bottom pieces are not quite aligned to the bottom point to this snapping point at the corner of this centerpiece. So I'm just going to pick these two pieces up while I'm zoomed in. And then I can pick it up by that intersection, right? Move it down. And then I'm going to slide it right back up until it pops into place. So there we go. Hopefully you got it right the first time. All right. So that's what happens. Nothing is going to happen if you ask something to combine into surface and it's not an enclosed space. So let's see if it works now. Modify, combine into surface. Click. Yeah, awesome. Okay, there we go. So I have just one more to do. Modify, combine into surface, and click. Cool. Okay, so then my next step is going to be to do some color changing, right? Um, I don't. Hold, please. Let me grab my sheet, my work. Here we go. All right, so, so let's select everything. Boom. Great. Now I want to change my line color, which is over here by the pencil. I'm going to change that from black to white. And then the other thing I'm going to change is how fat it is. I'm going to change it all the way up to one so it's nice and fat. So now I'll get that nice white outline that we were seeing in the thing. But at this point, now I can't see anything at all because everything is white on white on white. Luckily, once I click on things, as I'm, I'm holding down shift right now, so once I click on things, I'll highlight them and I can see that orange outline that tells me that's where one of my objects is. So I've clicked on my four center pieces in that cross. I'm going to go to solid color um, and I'm going to pick out a nice orange color. Okay, so there's that. Um, then I'm going to go and grab these center pieces and I'm going to find a color that approximates that kind of nice light blue. I'm not seeing, yeah, let's go with that. And then here for the outside edge, I'm going to select all of these outside ones. So I hold down shift and I just click my way around. Um, and those were kind of a teal color. So this is not quite what it was. So if I don't like any of the colors here, I can always just go up to the color wheel option, right? And I can just pick out the color that I want. 
and if I, you know, this is my hue, and then this is my uh, gray scale, right? So I can kind of find something that I like. Let's use that. Okay. There we go. There is logo pattern three. And if you've finished all three of these um, in class today on Wednesday, then you should probably make your own logo for your life because you seem to have mastered the basic skills that we were going for um, with this 2D drafting, which is basic construction skills. Um, there's plenty of other tools that you can check out and play with, so I would encourage you to look over here and just click around, right? See what happens when you use the polyline tool. It lets you make different kinds of lines that are connected in different ways. Or when you use the regular polygon tool, you can choose how many sides it has and draw them in different ways. So there's a bunch of tools we haven't touched on yet that you're welcome to go play with. Um, or you can live your life, as I like to say. I'm going to get some materials ready for your next project, hopefully tomorrow morning, so we may also have some pre-work that you could do to save yourself on, on the homework front. Um, one last thing that we always have to remember is once we've finished a piece, a step of the project like this, we got to save, right? And that's going to be Control S. That's your keyboard shortcut to save. So now we know we have a copy of it safe and sound on our hard drive. All right, awesome. Thank you. I'll see you guys again soon.